Hey, what's going on everybody and happy Friday the 13th to all my horror fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new movie review and today we'll be discussing a sequel to the 2016 horror film by the name of Don't Breathe and today we'll be discussing Don't Breathe 2 which I got a chance to check out in theaters and I'm gonna let you all know what I thought about the film. I'll let you know if it's worth checking out in theaters, if it was a worthy sequel in should there be more in this franchise? We're going to break it all down here in the spoiler-free review, but before we do so, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well, welcome to the community. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That way, you can get the alert for when I drop new content. If you all enjoyed this spoiler-free review of Don't Breathe 2, well, make sure to like and share this video. It helps out the channel a lot, but also appreciate the support. And in the comments, let's discuss a couple things. Number one, were you a fan of the 2016 Don't Breathe? Number two, did you want to see a sequel to that film? And and number three, of course, once you've seen Don't Breathe 2, what'd you think about it? Let's talk pros, cons. Did you think the sequel was better than the original? Do you want to see more from this franchise? Did you enjoy the narrative, the twists, the turns, all that fun stuff? Or were you disappointed and do you not want to see another film in this franchise? Let's discuss it all in the comments below. So for me personally, 2016's Don't Breathe was a really fun film, a really good horror thriller film. I enjoyed the narrative, the whole home invasion, coming into the blind man's house, learning that character, meeting Rocky and all that stuff. I love Fetty Alvarez and I'm so disappointed that he wasn't back to do the sequel, but nonetheless, I'm a big fan of that. But going into this, I was like, you know what, there is, or after seeing that 2016, I was like, you know what, there is room to tell more of the story about Rocky maybe being hunted by the blind man, but after the trailer, we obviously know that wasn't the route they were going. So, was it a worthy sequel? Is it better than the original? Is it worth checking out? Let's start off with my positives. First and foremost, as I said five years ago, and I'm going to say the same thing now, the sound design in these films are incredible. If I think they're on par with The Quiet Place, in my personal opinion, because the sound design is so integral in the story, and seeing the blind man not only in his house environment, but in the sequel, he's outside his house, so he's just as formidable as he is in his own surroundings, so I love how the set design, the sound design is so integral into telling the story, and it's pretty awesome how well they use the sound design in this film. So that's definitely a positive for me. Transitioning to uh, the performances is only really two, two standout characters for me in this entire film. And that's number one, Stephen Lang, an incredible actor. Him as the blind man, which it was still kind of... We'll talk about it a little bit later in my criticism, but it was still kind of hard to kind of place him as the the good guy in this film but I will say from a performance standpoint I, I never rooted for him I never felt sympathy or empathy for him but I, I don't think the character wanted that from the audience I, I, I think Stephen Lang in my personal opinion I think he conveyed that that he's not a hero per se he's just surviving and, and wants to get back where he feels is his which is his daughter in this film so I do think Stephen Lang did give a really good performance even though I prefer the killer Terminator, Michael Myers shape from the first one, but I do I do think that the performance is pretty strong in this film from Stephen Lang. But actually, the standout star for me is the young girl that plays his daughter. I believe her name is Madeline Grace, and I believe this might be her first time making a movie. She was pretty solid. Now, there were some moments where line delivery wasn't all that great, but also I think the script wasn't all that great for her. But as an, a young actress, she was given a lot. Number one, she was trained by the blind man, so you can only imagine the stuff that she's able to do in this film. And I thought that she played it off pretty well in regards to kind of be in this pseudo smaller miniature version of the blind man so I thought she handled that stuff and she you were believe that she can do the things that she did in this film and then number two there were some emotional moments that was required of this young actress I thought that she landed when she kind of finds out more about her past and things of that nature I thought that she stuck the emotional beat. So I thought that Madeline Grace as Phoenix, the uh, the daughter of the blind man, did a pretty solid job. So again, just recapping, I thought that the sound design, the performances, and I gotta say, man, the setup of this film, the first half of this movie is legit a really good movie. The setup of, again, and this is all in the trailer, this isn't a spoiler, the idea that the blind man has his daughter, and we know from the first one, all the fans of the first one know that that was his whole thing in the first one. He lost his daughter, and that was kind of his weird, sick, sadistic way of how he ended up trying to get another daughter, but seeing the first half of this film of him really caring for her, training her for survival, being very protective, overly protective of her, and, and then the idea of these people coming in and taking his daughter, and you learn why she is so unique in this film. So I thought that the setup was really fantastic, which unfortunately brings me to my criticisms once we get the, the twist, which is halfway through the film, that's when the film, to me, just really kind of sucked the air out of the room. Because, again, I can't stress enough, when you all see this film, you'll probably agree with me, 
The setup all the way up until like the back half of the second half was so intriguing. The thrills were there. The horror was there. Again, seeing the blind man defend his house, defend his daughter was so intriguing. And then also there's this underlying tone that the film puts in the back, in the, in the, in the foreground in regards to there's some people out there that are taking kids. So I kind of love that premise and it's, you know, real life with trafficking and all that stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. But then again, once we find out that twist, unfortunately, that's when the film goes off the rails. And that's also when we get more of the villains, which I thought the villains in this film, number one, main guy who's leading these people that are trying to take this girl. He was trying to like channel his Gary Oldman in the professional type of thing. And he fell flat on all fronts. I never found him intimidating. I never found the the, the bad people in this film to be just as bad. It's almost like the Suicide Squad where it's just like we have villains but we have a bigger villain that our villain has to go against. I never found them to be formidable to the blind guy. I never found that they can go toe to toe with him so they were never believable for me personally. And then again, I don't wanna spoil it but once you all see that twist, let me know if you felt the same way, but I'm just like, oh, why do we have to go down that route? Why did they just, just stick to that storyline instead of giving us that storyline? And obviously, I don't want to spoil it, but that's where the film kind of loses its momentum is once we get that twist, the film just kind of falls flat for me personally. It kind of loses its whole momentum. It loses its themes. It loses even the blind man, his purpose and kind of him getting more integral into the story just kind of lost its kind of... Uh, flair to it which brings me to the biggest issue that I have with this film is I could never conjure up and again I applaud Stephen Lang for never really conveying that he wants your empathy he wants your sympathy but the film wants you to feel bad for him because they're putting him in positions where he's getting more bumps more bruises he's getting really damaged in this film and the film wants you to kind of feel a certain way especially when you get to the third act of the film it's just like that never really stuck with me as well as if you add on top of this family drama that they throw in and it just kind of really doesn't sit well so again Fede Alvarez who was a fantastic director he had his hand in the script as well as the director of this film and I thought that they just kind of lost a grip on what a very riveting interesting compelling story could have been unfortunately wasn't lived up to his promise so I can go deeper into more of my negatives but that'll be deeper into the spoilers so before I give you all my overall thoughts and my score make sure if you haven't already like share comment your thoughts in the comment section of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell that way you don't miss any other content overall don't breathe too has some really unique kills has a really great set design sound design as well as a really awesome setup and a premise for that first half of the film and also a pretty surprising standout performance from the young girl by the name of matlin grace as phoenix but unfortunately once the film kind of loses itself in that second half and goes into this family drama and wants you to sympathize with the blind man it kind of falls flat but i can't neglect the production and the performances so i'm kind of split with this film ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna give don't breathe to a three out of five i personally think the first one is way more superior than the second one do i think this needed a sequel after we get to the resolution of the film i don't think so i do think that there was an opportunity to tell a compelling story to tie it into the first one because i won't lie they really don't reference the first one this is like i mentioned suicide squad earlier this is like the suicide squad where this is like a standalone sequel where they don't own they don't really reference what happened in the first one at all there's like hints at it by the blind man but they really don't establish that this was a film before another film so i i i i like the first one more I'm going to give this one, I don't think it was a worthy sequel. And then the last question I posed at the beginning, is there more? I'll just say this. If you see this in theaters, stick around to the end of the credits because there is a post credit scene and they leave the door open for a couple different possibilities of where they could take this franchise if they do do a part three, which I personally don't think they should do a part three unless Fetty Alvarez and another character comes back in the mix. But that's just my thoughts on Don't Breathe 2, a 3 out of 5. There's a lot of stuff coming out this weekend. I do think if you're a fan of horror, if you enjoyed the first one, you should go check it out. And when you do, let me know what you all thought of it, your pros, your cons. Do you want to see more? Do you think it was worth to make a sequel? Let's discuss it all in the comments. If you stuck around to end this video, I appreciate you all. Again, just a friendly reminder to like, share, comment below, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Hope you have a fun Friday the 13th. And we'll see you in the next video.